Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. In this video, we're going to fill a viewer request from Mr. Crow on HPK High Peak Energy. Now, I can see they are a profitable company, but it is a newer IPO, so not a lot of financial data to go on. So that's going to take our stock analyzer tool out of the equation. But I do, I do appreciate the attempt in the profitable company. But nonetheless, I'm not going to dive into too much financials. Uh, but nonetheless, thank you for the viewer request. I, I hope to get more of these viewer requests in the future. I, I love doing videos on this, and it gives me an easy way to bring a non-biased opinion to the equation. So before we get into this video, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. I have no personal holding in HPK High Peak Energy, and I'm not sure if it's in my index funds or not, but um, if it is, okay, that's my only tie to the company. But nonetheless, just stating my opinion, nothing more, nothing less. Okay, so going into this, profit margins 24%. Uh, net income year to date 106 million, revenue 439 million. Uh, price of sales a little bit high, negative free cash flow. I would want to be careful with that. It looks like they are paying a small dividend, uh, not taking up too much, only 18 million. So out of their net income, that's a small amount. They have pretty solid gross margins. I am attracted to this gross margins, especially with a newer company. I'm focused majority on that profit or that gross margin because that's going to help them uh, grow much faster and become a sustainable business for a long-term model uh, return on invested capital year to date negative 63 percent but uh, it is a newer company so I don't, I don't I'm not too familiar with that we are gonna hop over and I'm going to point out why we're not gonna go over the stock analyzer tool and it's simple enough I'm on this revenue tab right here 2019 see we only have three years of data right here See this large increase, huge increase, and then just a massive increase. Just massive. Is there going to be a realistic way to go in and project a valuation for this company? No. No, there's not. And me personally, I'd stay away from these companies, but I know that there is potential in them, which is why we're going to go to the chart. And I got a couple points that I want to get across. So right here, I am on Yahoo, and you see how from 2018... Pretty much to August of 2020, we hover around this $10 flat. We get not really much movement at all. It's because when they IPO'd in 2020, they used a SPAC merger. That is basically merging with a SPAC to launch public. And what's interesting about that is the year 2020. Now, what corresponded in the year 2020 with COVID, all-time low interest rates, all-time low barrier to entry. This is why in the year 2020, you've seen a lot of newer companies IPO because the barrier to entry, the window, the opportunity was there. It's not that, oh, look at all these new IPOs, uh, just out of, out of the blue. There's no reason for that. It's just a coincidence. No, there is a reason for everything, and companies seen the opportunity, and they took advantage of it. Now, some IPOs, good IPOs, some IPOs, pretty bad IPOs. It, it, it's hit or miss, but nonetheless, this company actually is profitable. They are in the oil and gas company. You know, that's that's been hitting pretty good right now. So they, they picked a pretty good time to entry, and that timing paid off for them pretty good, especially for now with, uh, you know, earlier this year, gas was just ridiculous. But, you know, that could also be a potential catalyst that, they are benefiting off of right now are they going to benefit into that going into the future it's what you're going to have to ask yourself so we are going to skip away from the financials i kind of dove into that just a little bit but uh yeah in terms of financials and valuation we're going to skip over that so we're going to go over to trading view now you can see we do not have the SPAC information. We have the exact date that they go public. We're on a day chart. Every candle represents a day. On August 24th of 2020, they IPO'd. Now, since then, they had a pretty good tank in price right there. Let's go see what this percent drop is. Okay, roughly 50% drop. Let's just uh, get a long-term trend line set real quick. I can see we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 points of contact. I feel that's a pretty realistic trend line right there. I'd be surprised if many people had that trend line set differently. 
Uh, maybe if you were taking excluding this point of contact, maybe they had it set a little bit like this. And if I were to pull that all the ways over, okay, we don't get a point of contact right here. I, I'd, I would just think that a lot of people have their, have their trend line set more like this. Uh, that would make sense to me. So we're going to look at this drop right here. So I'm going to take pretty much the high price right there. And we're going to take top of the move, bottom of the move, and whew, look at that, guys. Wick directly through my full extension. Would you look at that? What is that run right there? Had you bought down here at the bottom, 415% run, and you could have timed it perfectly. Look at that. On the money. On the money. Guys, this is why it is important to put a fib tool top of the move bottom of the move now let's say you were just buying this trend line you can see we have a nice trend line put through this during the time you probably could have had this set like this give or take look at this entry right there whoever bought right there smart man and if he held it for a full extension he got it and if he identified that full extension he sold it and he saved himself so he ran this up 400 percent and he saved himself a 71% loss. Now, with this drop right here, we have our left leg. Ripley, stop. Lay down. We have a left leg. We build our neckline. We get our right bottom. We get our extended right leg. Now, with any extended right leg, what do you got to do? You got to back test the neckline. Let's just mark that neckline out. And let's get rid of this fib tool. Where do we drop on this 71% drop? Literally on the money, guys. I can't make this shit up. This is a viewer request. And I'm just going over a raw chart right here. If I were mapping out this, we got a roughly $2.25 risk reward here. So if I was putting this up $2.25, we're looking at $8.50. And we're looking at $10.00 right around in there. Right around in there. Actually, it's a little bit higher. And look at that. You got wicked out on your 2 to 1 risk reward. Absolutely gorgeous. So you got in off this trend line. You sold the full extension. You bought the back test and neckline. You ran it for a 2 to 1 risk reward. What is that percent gain right there? You ran it up for another 81%. There's so many ways that you could have played this. This is great information right here, guys. And you're going to want to stick around for more because I got more good information to go over on this chart. So, nonetheless, let's get rid of this this back test of the neckline trade right here. Pretty interesting it to say the least. Let's just clear the whole chart. I mean, you guys got the point across right there. Pretty extraordinary to say the least. Let's get our long-term trend line off over there. Now, with this drop, okay. Now, if I go top of the move, bottom of the move, what do I see? Okay, getting some good action right there. We retest the all-time high. And you see how this doesn't really match up really well? You see how this doesn't really match up really well? Kind of does. But I'm going to actually play around with this because you can see that this clearly wasn't trading off valuation. It was clearly just trading off of a chart. If you have a hard time understanding that, I mean, the action that this gets at the full extension, people were not trading this during this time based off valuation. They were trading this for the full extension. Clearly, you get this huge sell-off. Now, here's another reason right here. We have our trend line. We have pretty parallel trend line. Well, if I take my tops here, you see how my upper trend line and my lower trend line are not parallel? Well, if I take that from the IPO price and I run this through these tops right here, okay, now we actually have a pretty parallel channel. Everything above this, I, I disregard. Don't take any regard into it. So actually where I'm setting this fall, I'm taking where we're bullish, 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 bullish. Okay, first sell-off. This is where I want to take that extension. We're going to slide this all the ways across. Okay, now we're talking direct correlation off my first extension. Let's zoom into this. I mean, this is this is just gorgeous right here. Direct correlation off my first extension. We gap up over my first extension. We back tested it on the money. We run, get rejected at my second extension. We hold at my first extension. We run back up to the first second extension. We hold at the first extension. We crack. Here we go. Here we go, guys. Told you there's some good information here. We crack. 
we backtest the bottom of my first extension and we sell off. Now, let's let's talk about this drop. Oh, but, yeah, you guys aren't ready for it. Let's talk about this drop. We have our initial fall. Boom. We have a wave two. We have a wave three. We have a wave four. You see how this wave four back test? Here's the bottom of my wave one. Never set to close above it. My wave four back test the bottom of wave one where we get a wave five. You guys see that? One, two, three, four, five wave structure. Following that wave structure, we got a clear A, B, C, ABC retracement. Following the ABC retracement, we have our one. No, no, no. Messed it up. We have our one, two, three, four. Back testing the bottom of my wave one. I'll mark that out for you guys. You guys see that? Bottom of wave one, two, three, four, where we get our wave five reverting back to my long-term trend line that you should have marked on your chart look at all the action right there direct correlation we set a double bottom right there comes in direct contact at the end of a five wave structure abc and a shorter term five wave structure reverting down to my long-term trend line now the way i would look at this is this is one solid wave so if I were to clear that whole chart right there that I went over, this is one big wave reverting down to my trend line where we are currently in a retrace. What is my retracement? I'm focused on my 618. Well, currently we're setting a close. Look at this, guys. We gap up right above my 382. We set a close right on my half. Right on my half. Is that a coincidence? I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. Nonetheless, I'm very focused on my 618 and my 702. If I see any type of double top come in here, I'm playing this this way. Now, I'm not I'm not in this stock, but if I was, that's how I'd be playing it. If I see a double top, I'm taking that as a wave 2. Now, we got some gaps to be filled. What's our price action right here? What's our price action on the next gap? What's our price action on the next gap? What's our price action at the all-time low price? If we get a crack of this price, I'm looking for a wave three. After a wave three, I'm looking for a wave four to back test the bottom of wave one. Nothing changes. It's just on a longer time frame. Nothing changes. And after a wave four, I'm expecting a wave five. What's my percent drop from the very top? Fifty percent drop roughly. From the top from the top of my wave four, what's my wave five gonna look like? Let's look for a fifty percent drop roughly. Let's mark that with a line. Right there. Now we're going to go we're going to look to the left of the chart here in a second, but nonetheless, let's take this fib tool off and let's take a look. Okay, I see a here's my double bottom that went right off of this trend line. This is my longer term trend line, right? Here's a double bottom off of it. Left leg, double bottom, extended right leg, you got a back test of neckline. Meets right in at there. Well, it gets better, guys. Just wait. Let's clear the whole chart and let's draw this up. Here's my initial fall. Let's for, let's not forget. This is still in effect. If we don't get price action at that 702, this this full extension is still in play. This can still turn bullish. Just because I'm talking about a five wave structure that could transpire doesn't mean that this doesn't turn bullish. This could easily get a full extension. Are are you guys going to go buy that to get the full extension right now? If you're if you're buying it after this after you see this video you need help i'm just stating my opinion here but this is that is a bull case scenario nonetheless i would be very alarmed to see the price action at a full extension there let's take that off what else do i see i see a left leg left bottom we build a neckline we get a right bottom we get our extended right leg where I'm then going to look for a back test of neckline since we got our extended right leg have we back test this neckline 1173 where was my five wave structure ending at around 984 I believe it was because there's my neckline right there here's your buying window guys you want to buy it up here and hope for a full extension or do you want to buy it down here at the back test of the neckline 
I'll leave that up to you guys this side. Let's go over and look at this. Had I told you this could transpire over here when we had our left leg neckline, double bottom, extended right leg, back test of the neckline. You guys, see, you guys see the point that I'm trying to get across right there? So there's a bull case scenario, there's a bear case scenario. Um, yeah, in terms of charting, uh, everything is supply and demand. Are more people going to want to buy or are more people going to want to sell? It, it, it's trading off of a chart right now. So I'll let you guys decide on which way you want to take that. This is going to complete my video. Oh, we were going to go check and see if uh, uh, I'm actually a holder in this company. Here's the mutual funds. I actually don't know. Nope. Uh, Vanguard Russell, uh, but I don't hold that. I hold Vanguard Total World Stock Market Index Fund. Doesn't look like I'm a holder of this company. What's the... Oh, my gosh. 89% insiders. Let's go take a look at what the insiders are doing. Purchased at 2161 for $50 million worth of shares on August 22nd. That was three days ago. Yeah, you think he? you think he's uh, going to dump heavy on a full extension? Are you going to trust that insider not to dump his shares on a full extension? Yeah, I'll leave, you, I'll leave that up to you guys this side. I hope you guys enjoy the content in this video. Thank you for the viewer request. And, yeah, send me more viewer requests. I'm more than welcome, uh, more than willing to do videos like this, and I enjoy it a lot. This was a lot of fun making this video. And we'll see you, on the, uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.